Located on the Darby Creek in Upper Darby Township, Pennsylvania, stands one of the few remaining colonial log cabins of Swedish architecture. It is most likely one of the oldest log cabins in North America. The cabin was built sometime in between 1638 and 1655 by Swedish immigrants or forest Finns who were recruited as a part of the new Sweden colony. The cabin stands relatively unaltered from when it was originally constructed. New Sweden was established by the Swedish crown for the purposes of trade and was first centered at Fort Christiana in present-day Wilmington, Delaware. With the arrival of Governor Johan Prince, the center of the colony's government was moved to Fort New Gothenburg on Tinicum Island, or the present-day Essington. There is no written record of the actual construction of the cabin or the families who first lived there. They were colonists who, due to the few roads or trails, traveled by water. Looking for new places to settle, they found their way up to what was originally known as Nykex Kiel, now the Darby Creek. Approximately 10 miles north, they encountered the Big Hill, or Stor Cruel, where there were rapids in the creek, which made travel further up the creek difficult. And so, this is where they settled in. This cabin features several distinctive early American woods architecture characteristics. The Scandinavian roots can be seen here in three distinctive features. To save time, the logs are left rounded with the bark on and not huge square. This left wider gaps that required more chinking. The space between the logs was chinked or stuffed with moss or clay and mud mixed with horsehair and stones gathered from the area. Each log is fitted together at all four corners with a V-notch, a technique widely used in Varmland, Sweden. Originally, the cabin was built on a stone foundation in each corner, leaving the space in between the first log and the earth to be chinked. At some point in time, the mud chinking was replaced with stone, and around the time of World War II, cement mortar was added to strengthen it. The corner fireplace is another characteristic of the early Swedish and Finnish log houses. While we are uncertain why this location was chosen, perhaps a corner fireplace does not have cold spots on the right and left hand sides as a fireplace on the gable end. Underfoot, hard packed clay was the floor of choice. During the colder months, straw was spread on the floor to provide warmth. In the mid-1980s, the cabin's dirt floor was replaced with a cement floor. There were no windows in the original Stuga. Sliding boards between the logs provided visual access to the outside and allowed light to enter. Windows were a later English modification. The raised pitch of the roof and a gable end window was added to create an upstairs room. Before this time, there had only been a loft that would have served as a sleeping place, perhaps for children. This loft would have been accessible only by a ladder. The cabin has two rooms, one larger and one smaller. One theory of this configuration maintains that 10 or 15 years after the original Stuga was erected, an addition was added to the east side to perhaps accommodate a son or daughter who married and needed a place to call home. Furnishings in the Stuga include four distinctively Scandinavian pieces. The chairs were handcrafted by one of our members using Polonia logs found on the property. A collection of period tools have been acquired over the years. Every tool that was needed to build a Stuga can be found hanging on the walls in the additional East Room. A homemade broom and shovel were used for chores around the house and garden, and on a wall shelf, we see a collection of household items. We have no names of the original Stuga residents. As the Swedes and Finns moved further inland, William Penn and the English Quakers purchased land from the Lenape Indians, resurveyed the area for their own use, moved in, and the little Stuga was lived in almost continuously for 350 years. Many of its residents were workers who toiled in the mills that were built along the creek after the Swedes moved on. It was during this period that the cabin was anglicized or modified. In 1987, an architect was selected and the contract for preserving the cabin was awarded. Many people played a role in refurbishing the cabin. And in April of 1988, the 350th anniversary of the Swedes landing in America was celebrated and the restored cabin was at last open to the public. Since that time, 
Much has been done and continues to be done to interpret, maintain, and promote this simple log cabin structure. And today, the cabin remains a highly unique historical site in which the history of our country is preserved for future generations.